It's the most wonderful time of the year, everyone, but this drink's delicious all year round. Today we're gonna make mold coffee. Let's make some coffee cocktails. All right, welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail Channel, everyone. I'm Dan Fellows, and today we're gonna to be making a really delicious seasonal drink, which works equally well as an alcoholic cocktail or as a non-alcoholic alternative to something like mold wine. So if you're watching this channel, you probably already love coffee, but if you don't already love mold wine, hopefully you're about to love an alternative to it, which is mold coffee. So I'm actually not a massive fan of the recipes that ask you to kind of throw everything in a pot, mull it all together, and end up with a huge batch of mold wine or something like this. I prefer to make it in a slightly different way. So the reason I don't like the big pot method are numerous. So first of all, you end up kind of heating it up and cooling it down and heating it up and cooling it down, kind of like an old school batch brew, giving you a very flat, kind of reduced, strange, acrid taste, which really isn't positive. Kind of like a lot of people associate with mulled wine, but this is gonna fix that. The second reason I don't like this is you end up cooking off some of the alcohol and obviously a lot of the aroma kind of goes into the air. The same would apply if we were applying this to coffee because you'd lose all that freshness and vibrancy. And third, because we're gonna be making a syrup, which is gonna be the base of our mulled coffee, which will then brew freshly brewed coffee at kind of peak freshness, peak aroma, peak flavor, then we're not having to make a huge batch. We can keep this small batch in the fridge. It lasts a lot longer, keeping freshness, giving us freshly brewed coffee, and it's very delicious. So in the next video, I'm gonna use this mulled syrup for a delicious, completely different coffee cocktail. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I mean, it, it really does make a huge difference to the channel, but for now, let's make some mulled coffee. So for the mulled coffee, we're gonna need a few things. In terms of spices, we're gonna go clove, cinnamon, star anise, nutmeg, and vanilla. We're gonna want a little bit of salt. We're gonna want some citrus in the form of two oranges and a lemon. We're gonna want a sweetener, which I'm going for light muscovado sugar. And then we're gonna go for either port or pomegranate juice depending on whether we're making an alcoholic or a non-alcoholic version. After this, we're gonna brew some freshly brewed filter coffee, which will add to the syrup to make our mold coffee. And you can always add a spirit to this, which we'll talk about later. So to make our mold syrup, we're gonna need some scales, of course. We wanna make sure we're super accurate with this. And you're gonna need a pan. And then in terms of the tools, they're all over here. If you wanna learn about my favorite bar tools, I'll put them all in the description below so you can pick them up for yourself. And we're gonna go in with six cloves, each of which weigh around 0.1 grams, so about 0.6 grams of cloves, which is much more than I usually recommend. But because clove is kind of a fundamental flavor to mulled wine, we're going in with plenty. We're not gonna be afraid of that overpowering flavor because we've got some other really big flavors going in there as well. And to this, we're gonna go two broken cinnamon sticks. And I'm kind of just breaking them up to increase the surface area. Think grinding finer to increase the surface area. And we're gonna get as much flavor out of these as possible. And these tend to weigh around three to five grams each. So you wanna go for six to 10 grams of cinnamon, seven and a half, which is about perfect. We're gonna break in one whole star anise for that kind of aniseedy flavor to complement the kind of Christmassy notes of the clove and the really nice warm spice of the cinnamon. And then we're gonna grate in some nutmeg. So in total, we're going for one gram of grated nutmeg on quite a fine sort of microplane. I think it's called a microplane greater like this. And a gram doesn't sound like much, but actually it is quite a lot. And it really comes through in the final drink. And then the final sort of spice element is gonna be fresh vanilla. So when it comes to the fresh vanilla, because vanilla is expensive and also delicious, we wanna get as much extraction and flavor from this as possible. So first of all, we're gonna cut this in half, sort of lengthways, which takes a little bit of practice, but kind of go with the knife and you'll see all the kind of paste from inside the vanilla, even on your knife. And then because we wanna get as much of this out as possible, you wanna give it a good scrape to get as much out as you can. It looks super delicious. You just wanna kind of knock it in with the vanilla so we don't lose any. And then we're gonna do the same with the second half of the vanilla pod. Gonna knock that in with the vanilla. And then you wanna chop this up nice and small into about one centimeter chunks so that again, you're getting as much flavor from this vanilla as possible. And if you don't have access to fresh vanilla, you can actually use vanilla extract, but there is really no substitute for expensive, admittedly, but super delicious fresh vanilla. So next in our mold syrup, we wanna add some citrus, starting with some orange, 
And what I like to do is peel the oranges, kind of gently to avoid getting too much pith, which can make your syrup a little bit bitter. And if you're super, you know, against pithy bitterness, you can actually remove the pith completely with a knife. But I don't mind a little bit of that kind of pithiness in there. I think it actually complements the sweetness of the syrup and actually the coffee quite nicely, as long as there's not too much. So because we want to get all the oils from two oranges, you want to take the peels and actually kind of squeeze them into the pan. And this is a little bit more labor, but if you don't do this, you get nowhere near as much kind of citrusy zestiness from the oranges. So I do really strongly recommend it. So we'll do the same for a second orange, squeeze these in and just make sure you reserve one peel for later. And I've got all the really delicious sort of aromatic zestiness. We also want to add the juice of two oranges. And this should equate to around about 100 grams, dependent on the size of your oranges. So squeeze all these in. And the next sort of citrus element is going to be lemon. So we're not going to be adding the juice this time, just the peels. Again, not removing too much pith. And we don't actually want to add the juice of the lemon because it would be too acidic. And we're not looking for a sort of sour mold syrup. We're looking for a zesty, spicy, sweet syrup. So again, going to express all of these lemons into our syrup, which is coming together very nicely and smells immense, to be honest. It does smell Christmassy, but also these kind of spice notes work in autumn, they work in spring and can work in summer with kind of colder drinks. So don't be afraid of making this all year round. Next up, we're going to sort of season our syrup with a gram of salt, good quality sea salt. And this kind of brings everything together and makes it really sort of Moorish when you mix it with other things. And then we need to sweeten it. So I'm going with 100 grams of light muscovado sugar, which I've pre-weighed, but you can go with your favorite sugar. Although I'm not a huge fan of that kind of confectionery, super sweet, sticky mulled wine thing, which tends to have white sugar. So I like to use something brown, which kind of brings the spices in together with the coffee and it makes it kind of more harmonious, kind of toffee, fudgy, butterscotchy to complement all those kind of brighter notes of the citrus and the spice. So 100 grams of sugar, and then we're gonna go 100 grams of either good quality port or good quality pomegranate juice. So it's up to you which you prefer. This is port, but pomegranate juice is just as delicious. So now we've assembled our sort of mold syrup. You want to put this on the heat. You want to put it on a sort of medium high heat to bring it to the boil. And then once it comes to the boil, you want to bring the heat down to a sort of medium heat for around about five to 10 minutes until it fully sort of infuses. So as our mold syrup simmers away, you can either let this kind of do its thing, cut the heat and let it completely cool if you want to get as much kind of flavor intensity in our syrup. But if you're making this fresh, now would be a really good time to brew your coffee. So when it comes to choosing a coffee, I'm making this video at Christmas time, but it is a really delicious all year round drink if you like those kind of spicy flavors. But since it's Christmas, I'm gonna go for a Christmas blend. So this is candy cane from my friends at Coal Town Coffee in Wales. And it's got those kind of flavor notes we're looking for. So they say mulled wine, cranberry, sugar plum, which is kind of perfect for what we're looking for. And you can brew this however you usually brew it. So I'm gonna be brewing it as a V60. And I don't necessarily think you need to change your brewing parameters away from how you normally brew coffee. So I'm gonna go with 20 grams of coffee, 300 grams of boiling water, brewed in around about three to four minutes. So as I do that now, I'm gonna let my syrup simmer away and then I'll be back with you after a short montage of brewing coffee. So we have freshly brewed filter coffee, we have our syrup, which we need to now pass through a sieve, through a funnel, into a bottle. I've got this tool, which I think is really cool. Kind of a sieve funnel combination, which I'll link below in the description. Could call it a stronnel. And you want to make sure you've got a yield of around about 150 grams in total. And this just means that we've got control over the kind of sweetness level down the line. So pour it through your stronnel, or a sieve and a funnel will work just fine, but it does want to be quite nice and fine. And then once this is completely passed through, measure your yield. If it's a little bit more than 150 grams, that's fine. You just want to add a little bit more of the syrup to the final drink. And if it's less than 150 grams, it's going to be more concentrated. So you want to add a little bit less. So strain this through, measure it, and then we're going to start building the final drink. So now we've got our finished syrup. We've got our freshly brewed filter coffee, nice and fresh and hot and extremely aromatic, which is what we want. We can start building the drink. So the formula you want is one part of your syrup 
to one part of a spirit, which is optional, and then five parts coffee. So I'm gonna go with 30 mils of our syrup, which is the kind of base flavor profile. I'm gonna go one part of our spirit, and you've got a pretty open field here. You wanna go for something that's aged, maybe a rum, maybe a brandy is really nice, but I'm gonna go for probably, I think, a whiskey. Fire and cane, a kind of peaty whiskey would be really nice. Uh, some of the kind of more tropical fruit notes I probably would avoid. So I'm gonna go with something kind of spicy. So Glenfiddich 15, which is aged in three different barrels, would be a really good option. It's kind of spicy, it's got some red fruit in there. Super delicious whiskey. But because this is a kind of seasonal drink, pick a whiskey that you love, one that you've got at home, or a spirit that you've got at home. And we're gonna go one part of that as well. So 30 mils. So 30 mils of our syrup, 30 mils of our spirit, and then we're gonna go 150 mils of our fresh filter coffee. With again, those kind of spice notes, a little bit of kind of dried fruit and plum in there as well. It's very, very delicious and aromatic. So this kind of mimics mulled wine in a way. If we've got the non-alcoholic version, the pomegranate will come through. With the more alcoholic version, we've got the port coming through. And with the syrup base, don't worry too much about kind of cooking off the alcohol in the port because we're actually gonna be adding that through the spirit anyway. You really want the flavor of the port and the pomegranate rather than the kind of alcohol from the port. We wanna then flame that leftover orange zest from earlier over the drink to give it that really nice kind of burnt zesty aroma. Kind of rim the glass, really express it over the drink for those fresh zingy notes. And then to garnish, if you're feeling fancy, you can go for a dried orange piece you could maybe take this off a wreath, but make sure it's not been like perfumed. And gonna just drop that on top of the drink. And there we have mold coffee. Cheers everyone. Season's greetings, whatever season it may be. Super tasty. It's like the perfect alternative to mold wine. The non-alcoholic version is still really, really good. With a little bit of alcohol, it just gives it a little bit of warmth and lift. We've got all the kind of really, really clear coffee flavor coming through in a really good way but it's almost like tricking your mind to think it tastes like red wine and mulled wine with all the kind of spices, all the kind of citrus, good quality balanced sweetness, but not like overpoweringly sweet, which is really nice. I actually love it. It's like a really winter warming drink. It's very easy to make at home. It takes a little bit of time, but it's completely worth it. You end up with all this delicious mulled syrup, which you can make plenty more batches of mulled coffee with. You can also use this for mulled wine if you kind of prefer to, which is totally fine but you can also use this for other cocktails. So if you gain value from this, make sure you add me on Instagram, which is at danfellows1, and let me know how you get on below in the comments. If you wanna see more uses for this delicious mulled syrup, I will link a video which is gonna be here. If it's not there already, it'll be there in a few days. And if you wanna see another really delicious kind of warm seasonal cocktail, I will put another one down here for you to watch. So subscribe to the channel, which you can do here. And like I say, that really does help. But in the meantime, Season's greetings, enjoy some mulled coffee, and cheers.